Praise the Lord Jesus from wherever you are watching from. So today I have an amazing, amazing, amazing video that I'll be playing for you shortly. It's actually uh, by Prophet uh, Lovi. And he's actually just uh, speaking about uh, the revelation behind the water. Yeah, the revelation behind water. And in connection to that is uh, speaking also about uh, T.B. Joshua, the late uh, Prophet T.B. Joshua, the way that he was using water, uh, doing miracles and all that. And he's actually, uh, should I say, contrasting that to God's word and just trying to explain it. It's, it's, it's quite, uh, it's quite eye-opening, definitely, because, you know, we have been bringing up these exposures. We've been uh, pointing fingers at men of God and uh, props, you, you, you see, possibly or probably uh, we are accusing them without revelation. Maybe there's something that they know that we are not uh, currently aware of. So we are just accusing and, uh, and uh, dissing them, but without any revelation. So in this video, he's explaining, he's explaining uh, the use of water. And it's actually, he's, he's just doing it in a very, very new way. So I'll, uh, I'll, I'll allow us to watch this and then we'll just get back and then speak after this. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Prophet T.B. Joshua, I'm going to point to the old man who is going to be with the Lord. Which some, you know, some idiots thinks that he's been exposed. You can't expose a dead man. It's crazy to me. The person is dead you're exposing. What are you exposing? You don't understand. That is you are trying to destroy legacy. You can say that. Don't say exposing. Whether he did it, he didn't do it, doesn't matter to me. That's between him and Jesus. All I know is the impact that he did to people. Now hear me, hear me by the Spirit of God. Hear me. The man of God received a revelation from God to use water to spray on people during prayer and people got delivered. Thousands around the world. Did I ever use his water? No. But I know of people who did and people got tremendous freedom. But today they will tell you that is marine kingdom. You don't need that. You just need the name of Jesus. Well, Jesus was alive. He went to the temple. The temple had a pool of healing. They called it the pool of Belteza. Still there until this day. This pool was designed by revelation of God to whoever, because not every temple had a pool. This specific one had one for the sick. And they knew that an angel comes to stir up the waters, that whoever touches the waters gets what? Healed. Healed. But because Christians have been so brainwashed, when you see somebody with water, you immediately think marine spirit. <laughs> it is the most foolish thing, as if marine spirit invented water. There is a prophet I'm, I know, when I was a child, he's one of the prophets that knew that I was a prophet when I was a child. I don't talk about him much, but today I'm going to speak about him. His name was Samuel Masamukidi. He was a Congolese prophet. He only lived to be about 36 years old, I believe. Huh? 34, I believe, 34, 36. He went home very early. His name was Samuel Masamukidi. I got the privilege not only to meet him, but to meet his closest person, who also went to be with the Lord maybe four years ago. This man was a different man. He was a, he was a Nazarene. Never cut his hair. I, if you look at my, I posted a video on IG. Uh, it was, and I said, my fathers, their spirits are upon me. And I meant that because it's true. There's a man, you see them sitting there with very scary eyes, wearing like a brownish kind of jacket, and his eyes are just fastened, but he has like a strange afro. No razor ever touched this man's head. This man was... Hey, I don't know how to talk about him. He opened blind eyes like eat McDonald's. <laughs> no, the things he raised so many dead people, I don't even know. Like there is no count. Like the things that this man wow. did. 
are beyond what words can say. Angels were always around this. But he never used the anointing oil. He never used the anointing oil. That's not what God told him to do. What they did was, because water is very scarce in the Congo because of the climate and stuff, the, the, actually the management of things. What he did was, they would gather water, like when it rains or whatever, they will have buckets of water. And what he would do is, he would tell them to put them in jugs and he would pray over them. During service, he would take that same water and say in the name of Jesus and splash it like this. Anyone that is lepers were walking, deaf people were hearing, whatever. That was his revelation, but he knew what I'm talking about now. I'm just, you know, sometimes I feel like I'm telling you too much. Maybe I shouldn't. But this is a man I know. To the point that his, his followers, those who followed the ministry, uh, um, started taking the water, take the, they would have the water at home. When they cooked, they put some of the water inside. If there was somebody sick in their house, the sickness went away. This was his divine revelation. Is this making sense? Why? Because water is an element that exists primarily in heaven. If you read Genesis chapter 1. Oh. Yeah, so this teaching is actually speaking about four different elements. So speaking about wind, speaking about water, is speaking about stones. Yeah, and there is the fourth one. <laughs> so he's actually speaking about these different elements. So here he just uh, was just bringing in uh, how water now men of God have been using it now to actually with the revelation if it's to heal the sick if it's uh like for example the water that uh, the man of god is giving you and then you go in you cook with it and if anyone tests that food or eats that food uh if they have any sickness definitely that sickness just chucks out of their body yeah so i don't know what you think about this i don't know what you think about this but this is what i think about this um I'm not against that really i'm not against that because i know uh, as men of god have different revelations but uh there's nowhere first of all let us just agree there's nowhere that jesus told us to use water or to use wind there's nowhere that he said that so that is actually the first thing the second thing about water second thing about uh, anointing oil uh, and even the handkerchiefs like we saw paul using there is nowhere there's nowhere that just from the first part there's nowhere that god asked us to do that really he didn't say he didn't ask us to do that there's nowhere that you are asked to do that but uh, i i always look at it like this we we are anointed you know immediately the holy spirit came and uh, the bible says that our temple our bodies are the temple our bodies are temples of the holy spirit imagine my body is the temple it's not just the house it is the temple of the holy spirit so definitely that means there's a lot of ministration just like a temple what goes around in a temple there's a lot of ministrations in a temple the temple we assume uh it's full of the anointing of god and everything so we are anointed from the crown of our heads to the soles of our feet we are anointed immediately the holy spirit came be in us because the spirit of god carries that presence that anointing presence so immediately he came uh we are automatically anointed so with our anointed hands bible says that you will uh you will lay hands on the sick and they'll get healed why because you are anointed you remember even the shadow of uh was it um shadow of peter and john if i'm not wrong in the book of acts if i'm not wrong the acts the apostles when they were speaking about what they the disciples were doing you remember the, their shadow just their shadow will touch the sick and the sick will get healed you remember even the bones of uh the the, the prophet in the, the old testament when a dead person was going actually to be laid on the same graves 
when that body touched those bones that guy received life and he actually came back to life why because of the anointing so if the anointing could still exist in 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 bones that were buried for so many years what about who we are alive and the holy ghost is in us and with us and for us what about us so the use of water the use of handkerchiefs the use of anointing oil the use of um whatever i believe that uh maybe that's as uh, that's a it's a sudden revelation whatever whatever spiritual sense that is that's okay but my point is uh, and this is very personal my point is that we are anointed and we don't need any of that <laughs> i don't think so i don't think we need any of that i think we are just fully anointed and we don't need any of that but uh, the teaching is quite amazing because it's actually speaking to us a lot of symbolism, uh, speaking to us a lot of spiritual truth about water. Because even if you study your Bible in the book of Revelation 4, let me just get that scripture for you right now. The book of Revelation 4, because you see what Prophet Lovi here was saying. I'm not against what he was saying. Definitely, I know in the Bible, so many parts, you'll get uh, water being mentioned, water being used. Bible says that in heaven, we'll be walking on gold. So definitely, there's, uh, there's a lot of spiritual spiritual revelation to all these things. Uh, revelation 4. This was actually the vision that uh, John had received. So from Revelation 4, he's speaking about heaven. And it's actually drawing for us a picture of what is in heaven. So let me just show you. So this one is a vision of heaven. So after this, I looked and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was as if it was of a trumpet talking with me, which said, come up hither and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. So he's, he had a voice and the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet so i don't know if i should go deeper on this scripture really or just uh fast forward to where because there's a lot of information on that part because whose voice was that whose voice was that as if it were of a trumpet so two says and immediately i was in the spirit and beheld a throne was set in heaven and one sat on the throne and he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone. You see here, they have spoken about stones. It's the first thing. But they have said it was, he, he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone. And there was a rainbow round about the throne. In sight like unto an emerald. And round, and round about the throne were four and twenty seats. So that is twenty-four seats. Or twenty. Actually, it's not supposed to be seats. It's supposed to be thrones. And upon the seats, I saw four and twenty-four elders sitting, clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices. And there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Now listen to six. And before the throne, there was a sea of glass like unto crystal. And in the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. So, if you keep reading, uh, you'll see now from his vision, you'll see that there are different elements that are actually in heaven. 
Like, for example, we've seen the stones. If you keep reading, you'll see the gold. You'll still see the sea. Yeah, and and all that. So, so this is quite an amazing teaching. But uh, my opinion, according to me, we are anointed. And every part of our bodies is anointed. So you remember even that testimony of that soldier that wanted uh, his, her daughter actually to get well, to be healed. So Jesus just said the word and that child received that healing. He just spoke the word and it happened. We didn't see him sending any water. We didn't see him sending any anointing oil. We didn't see him sending any part of his clothes. We didn't see him sending any stone. He just spoke the word. And immediately the soldier left that place. When he got home, he found the daughter was well. That's what, that's what happened. So I'd like to know what you think about this definitely on the comment section. It will be so great for me to be able to hear from you. What do you think about this? What do you think about these elements? Are they elements that we are supposed now to be using as Christians? Like for example, the water, the way Prophet Lovi has explained it. As these elements, things that we are supposed to use, what do you think about this? I'd like to hear what you think about this. So right uh, on the comment section, definitely this one is for educational purposes. We're just trying to sharpen each other's iron sharpens iron. So let us not let us just be let us just be easy with one another in the comment section no need to go very hard on one another let's just be easy let's just have a conversation and definitely we we are all open to to learn we're all open to learn so i like to hear what you have to say about this on the comment section don't forget to like the video subscribe to this platform and i'll uh, see you on the next episode